Hi guys, it's your girl Duana here with a so long for my pattern ME2051. And I'll be working on my view A, the jacket for this so long. This jacket was a lot of fun to make. I enjoyed making it. I think it was pretty simple. It is unlined. It does mention lining here, but that is actually for the pocket. Okay, so it is unlined, but it is, it, it's very warm. I love it. I think I'm going to wear it like when the weather starts to get a little cooler. I think it's great for just going outside for a walk. If I'm going to the gym, going to the store, anywhere I could wear it. One thing I will suggest is whatever fabric you do use, get one with a slight stretch, like 5% stretch because it does help the jacket to give a little bit better shape you don't want it to be too stiff and um i just i wanted to make sure that my fabrics were a lot softer and just you know a little bit stretchy just so it can move in case i'm running with it you know if so if you're running with it um in in it's cold outside you don't want it to be like crunching and munching you know you don't want to be like this you want to be like this <laughs> I don't know if that made sense, but yeah, you definitely get a fabric that's a little bit more, it's like a slight bit stretchy, not like, not like knit, like active wear knit, like that's for view B and C. But if you want to make sure that you get a perfect fabric, make sure it has a slight stretch to it. That would actually be the icing on the cake. So without further delay, let's get started on my sew long for my pattern ME2051. All right, so let's take a look at the pattern. This is ME2051. This is view A, the jacket. This is view B, the bra top, and C, the pants or the leggings. If you look at the back, it gives you your different views. So the back view, if you can see, view B has an X back, and you can see more of how the contrast looks in the back of the jacket. Um, just a little bit of fabric suggestions for you. Of course, you're not limited to those. If you're looking for the finished garment measurements, they are inside the packaging. And so that's about it. Let's get started with the fabric and the supplies we're going to need. So here are the materials that you're going to need. You need your main fabric. Then you need your contrast fabric. You need a separating zipper. And this zipper is 30 inches in length, but the instructions call for a 32 inch in length. Either one should work. Then you have your cording and you also need one inch elastic for the sleeves. And these are cord stops. This is optional, but I like to have them. And you need eyelets or grommets. And last but not least, fusible interfacing. Okay, so let's take a look at the pattern pieces. We got pattern piece number one. This is the upper front and we're gonna cut two of fabric. All right, this is pattern piece number two. This is the upper side front, and you're gonna cut two of the contrast fabric. Pattern piece number three, this is the upper back, and you're gonna cut two of fabric. Pattern piece number four, this is the upper side back, and you're gonna cut two of the contrast fabric. This is pattern piece number five. This is the lower front, and you're gonna cut two of fabric. Pattern piece number six, this is the welt, and you're going to cut two of the contrast fabric and two of interfacing. This is pattern piece number seven, this is the pocket, and you're going to cut two of fabric. This is pattern piece number eight, this is the pocket facing, and you're going to cut two of the lining fabric, which I actually used as my regular fabric. Pattern piece number nine. This is the lower back, and you're going to cut two of fabric. Pattern piece number 10, this is the front facing, and you're going to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. This is pattern piece number 11. This is the back facing, and you're going to cut one on the fold of the fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. This is pattern piece number 12. This is the flange, and you're going to cut two of contrast fabric. This is pattern piece number 13. This is the sleeve, and you're gonna cut two of fabric. This is pattern piece number 14. This is the undersleeve, and you're gonna cut two of the contrast fabric. And last but not least, pattern piece number 15. This is the elastic guide for the sleeve, and you're gonna cut two of these. All right, let's get started. Notice I did a stay stitch on pattern piece number two. 
I usually do this with the stretchier fabric so when I'm matching them together, they line up a lot better. So yeah, usually the stretchier fabric tends to stretch out a little longer and distort the pattern and so you don't want that. So I like to stay stitch the fabric to make sure that doesn't happen. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pin those two pieces, pattern piece number one and pattern piece number two, together matching those notches. Now go ahead and stitch those together. Alright, so here are both front pieces. I made sure to press my seam towards the upper front and I use bias tape also to keep it nice and clean because it's not lined. And I also made sure to stay stitched the neck edge of the upper front. All right, we're gonna grab our back pieces and we're gonna do the same thing to that. So this is pattern piece number three and four. And we're gonna go ahead and pin the upper back to the upper side, back matching notches. When you are done pinning, go ahead and stitch those together. All right, so now take both back pieces and you're gonna stitch them at the center back. All right, make sure also with pattern piece number three and four that you press the seam towards the upper back. All right, so once you're done pinning the center back, you can go ahead and take that to your sewing machine and stitch it together. So here's the center back and as you can see I pressed my seams open and I also stay stitched at the neck edge of the upper back. Now grab your front pieces and you're going to pin the front to the back at the shoulder and the side edges. Okay, so now go ahead and stitch those together. This is what it looks like and I love to use bias tape. It is optional but it makes it look so good inside especially since it's not lined. Grab your pattern piece number five the lower front and what you're going to do is you're going to stitch along the stitching lines for the pocket. It's a good idea that when you hit the corners that you reinforce those edges just to make sure when you do your clippings that it doesn't pass through the stitches. Alright, so let's tackle these welt pockets. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold the welt along the fold line with right sides together. Alright, you're going to stitch the ends and you're going to trim the seams, clip corners, and you're going to turn the welt. So when you're done pushing out those corners, you can go ahead and machine baste about 5 8 of an inch the raw edges. I used to find weld pockets very challenging, but one thing I learned is that once you have all of your markings, you should be fine. All right, so we're gonna take our welt and we're gonna pin the welt to the lower front, placing the basting line along the lower stitching line, matching the small and large dots. I like to pin the weld pocket to the lower front just to make sure that it doesn't move when I'm stitching it together and that helps a lot. Also making sure your pins are not um, touching the basting line because you wanna be able to sew on the basting line without removing the pin. Once you're done pinning those together, flip it over. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually stitch from the back because you wanna make sure that you're stitching on that line. And so I do my quick basting stitch. Notice I didn't move the pin because I wanna keep it nice and straight. Now go ahead and grab your pocket facing and I label them pocket facing because I don't want to mix it up with actual pocket. And what I'm going to do is with right sides together, I'm going to pin that pocket facing to the lower front 
over the welt, matching the small dots. All right, so once you've secured it with the pins, you're gonna stitch between the small dots in a 5 8 of an inch seam, back stitching and reinforcing. All right, so this is what it looks like, and now you're gonna trim the seam to 1 4 of an inch. If you haven't already, make sure you have your marking for the slash line. So I just went ahead and drew my slash line and I'm going to slash the lower front separately along that slash line, clipping diagonally to the small dots at the corners. Do not clip the welt or the pocket facing. All right, so once you're done slashing the slash line, you can go ahead and turn your pocket facing and clipped corners to the inside. All right, and so now make sure you're doing that to the other pocket as well. Okay, so now go ahead and grab your pocket and you're going to place it right sides together. I had my markings on the right sides of the fabric, so I decided to do them on the wrong sides just to make sure that I am matching my small dots appropriately. All right, so now you're going to pin the pocket to the pocket facing and lower front along the stitching line, making sure you're matching those dots. Now go ahead and stitch those together. We are almost done the welt pocket, yay! And so now we're gonna go ahead and now pin the actual pockets together. Now go ahead and stitch those together. When stitching the pocket pieces together, you wanna make sure that you're also catching in the clipped corners at the beginning and the end. Now on the outside, you're going to press the weld pockets up, matching large dots, and you're going to stitch close to the ends of the weld, or if you prefer, invisibly slip stitch ends to lower front. I decided to just top stitch the ends. Now, if you did all your markings, you should see these two dots at the top, and those are going to be for your eyelets or grommets. Before you apply the grommets, you wanna have a square piece of interfacing attached to the back where the grommets are gonna be. And then you're gonna apply the grommets to that lower front at the small dot following the manufacturer's directions. So now we're gonna make a casing for the tie for the lower front section. You can cut a piece of bias tape, the length of the upper stitching line. I used fabric, I did not use actual bias tape, um, and that's fine, either one works. So you're basically cutting it that size plus one fourth of an inch, um, and then you're gonna open out one long edge of the tape and press, and then press under the inner end one fourth of an inch. All right, so now on the inside, you're gonna pin the tape to the lower front with the pressed edges just lapping the stitching line. Make sure you're doing it to both sides and once you're done pinning, go ahead and stitch close to the pressed edge of the tape and you're going to base the upper edge. All right, so you're gonna have your cording and you're gonna thread the cording through the grommet to meet the side edge of the lower front, sandwiched between the front and the bias tape. I also chose to add a cord stop to the cord, but it is optional. All right, make sure you base the sides to hold those um, cords in place. And then you're going to pull on the cord stop just to give it a little gather. All right, so we can put that aside and we're gonna bring out the lower back sections and we're gonna stitch the lower back at the center back. 
Again, make sure you're matching those notches. All right, so once you're done pinning those together, you can go ahead and stitch it together. And I press my seams open, and as you can see, I added the bias tape again just to give it a nice clean finish. All right, and so now you're gonna add the lower front to the lower back by stitching them right sides together. Make sure that you're matching your notches. All right, so once you're done pinning those together, go ahead and take that to your sewing machine and stitch it together. And this is what it should look like. So as you can see, I still use bias tape to give the edges a nice clean finish. And I also have the front gathered. Now you're gonna grab your upper jacket and you're going to pin the upper jacket to the lower jacket, matching the seams and notches. Okay, so now this part, you really have to make sure that you are making sure that everything is lining up and make sure your notches are matching up. Make sure you adjust your gathers to make sure that everything's lining up. And once you're done pinning, you can go ahead and stitch it with your sewing machine. It's a good idea that you start stitching from the center just in case because if your fabric has a little stretch and you start at one end it can actually get misaligned and so i like to do the center because from center one center to the end you can make sure that your fabric is more aligned All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get our zipper and we're going to attach it to the front of our jacket. The instructions call for a 32 inch zipper. I ended up using a 30 inch zipper because I feel like it matched a lot closer to the sizing that I was using. But be sure to check because you might be better off with a 32 inch. Okay, so you're going to start by separating the zipper and with right sides together, you're going to pin the left half of the zipper to the right front opening. You want to place the zipper teeth about one eighth of an inch over the seam line and the top and bottom stops at the large circles as shown in the instructions and you're going to baste it together. And once you're done, you're going to pin the right half of the zipper to the left front opening. And then you're going to baste that together as well. All right, so this is what it should look like. And we're going to put this aside and we're going to work on the flange. So this part is going to be what would be like and a hooded shoulder. It wrong sides together. And now you're going to baste the raw edges. Pin the flange to the armhole edge matching the small and large dots, placing the inner small dot at the shoulder seam. Baste it together. All right, so grab your sleeve pieces and with right sides together, you're gonna pin the undersleeve to the sleeve matching the notches. Go ahead and stitch those together. All right, so your sleeve should now be right side out. Hold the jacket wrong sides out and with the armhole towards you. With the right sides together, you're going to pin the sleeve to the armhole edge with the center small dot at the shoulder seam and lower large dot at the underarm seam. Make sure you are matching your notches. All right, so go ahead and stitch those together. Okay, so now it's time to attach the facing and I actually went ahead and already stitched the front facing and the back facing pieces together. Make sure they are already interfaced and I'm going to attach it to the jacket. And also make sure that you're matching notches, but also more importantly, make sure that your seams are matching up.
And when you're done pinning, you're going to stitch all the way down. And I like to start at the center, but you're going to stitch all the way down until you reach the end. And again, I always start at the center and work my way out and all the way down. All right, make sure you have trimmed or clipped any corners and curves. And now we are going to understitch the facing. Right, so when you're understitching, you want to make sure that your seam allowance is facing towards the facing. And when you hit some corners, it's going to be hard to understitch those areas. So that's fine. You just don't understitch those areas and just pick up where you can. It's starting to look so good. We are almost done. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make the casing for the elastic for the lower edge of the sleeve. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn under the raw edge about one fourth of an inch and I'm going to press it. And then I'm going to press up around and one so now and I'm going to take that to the sewing inch. machine and I'm going to stitch close to the inner pressed edge leaving an opening to insert the elastic. All right, insert the elastic through the casing and you can adjust to fit. Stitch ends of the elastic together securely and you're gonna stitch the opening closed. Last but not least, I'm going to hem the bottom of the jacket. Now, because I use bias tape, I did a little differently. So I folded the bottom of the jacket um, to the hemline and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it and I'm going to top stitch, making sure I actually stitch on top of the bias tape. All right, so sleeves are done. All right, it zips up and everything lines up. Make sure you trim any loose threads and um, wash out any markings and you are done now go ahead and rock that jacket stay tuned for photos thanks for watching my so long for my pattern me2051